good soup. The Lord of Light doesn't have many followers in Westeros, does he? Not yet. But even those who don't worship the Lord can serve his cause. What does your Lord expect from me? Bosses bantis amazis. Merikivio dolalaris os machagon kuntas. The prince who has promised will bring the dawn. I'm afraid I'm not a prince. High in the halls of the kings who are gone, Jenny would dance with her ghost. Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 2, A Knight of the King's Guard, included something from the books I thought I would never hear on the show, Jenny's song. Not only were we treated to the lovely voice of Podrick Payne, is there anything he can't do, but it's the first time the song's lyrics have been revealed in their entirety. Only the first two lines had ever been sung in the books. High in the halls of the kings who were gone, Jenny would dance with her ghosts. Now with the full version of the song, we can possibly decipher its true meaning, a meaning that is believed to contain the secret for the end of A Song of Ice and Fire. Jenny's Song is a song from the books that is steeped in Westerosi lore and mythology, specifically for House Targaryen. In a way, the song memorializes the night that sparked the beginning of the end of the Targaryen dynasty, the tragedy of Summerhall. With this in mind, many of the lyrics in the song can be viewed as references to that tragedy. The tragedy of Summerhall occurred when King Aegon V, a man obsessed with dragons, attempted to bring dragons back into the world by holding a ceremony at the Targaryen Summer Castle. He invited several members of his family, including his eldest son, Prince Duncan Targaryen, and Duncan's wife, Jenny of Oldstones. The ceremony went terribly wrong, a great fire consumed and destroyed the castle entirely, and King Aegon, his son Prince Duncan, and Duncan's wife Jenny all lost their lives. This led to the throne being passed down to King Aerys Targaryen, otherwise known as the Mad King. In the books, it's a little different. The throne was passed down to Aegon's second son, Jaharis. For some reason, the show decided to simplify this succession, removing Jaharis entirely, but his reign was short in the books anyway. The significance of Jenny of Oldstones within the story of A Song of Ice and Fire begins with her commoner status. Prince Duncan fell for the common girl and married her without his father's consent. Thus, Aegon V forced his oldest son to abdicate his position in the line of succession. He was no longer going to sit on the Iron Throne. Prince Duncan gave up his future crown to be with his love, Jenny. When Jenny came to King's Landing with Duncan, she brought with her a friend, simply known to the readers as the Woods Witch. Many believe that the Woods Witch was one of the children of the forest, since she was described as being a stunted woman with a grotesque appearance. The Woods Witch was known to have prophetic dreams, and she told Aegon V that the prince who was promised would be born from their line. Now, the Woods Witch was also believed to have been killed during the tragedy of Summerhall, but many book readers believe that she survived, now going by the name The Ghost of Highheart. The Ghost of Highheart is a character that only appears in the books, but she is described as having a very similar appearance to the Woods Witch, and is also known to have prophetic dreams. We are introduced to the Ghost of Highheart in book number three, Storm of Swords. The Brotherhood Without Banners visit the mysterious woman to heed her visions of both future and past. She tells them of the deaths of both Renly Baratheon and Balon Greyjoy. She tells them of the death and resurrection of Catelyn Stark, and she also predicts the future of Arya Stark becoming a faceless assassin, possibly even foreshadowing Arya's death at a young age, a scene that was recreated in season three between Arya and Melisandre. The visions that belong to the Ghost of High Heart do not come free. She demands a price, that price being Jenny's song. Whenever she hears the song, she begins to sob uncontrollably, weeping for her long-lost friend Jenny. Now, Jenny's song may implicate the fate of Jon and Daenerys in Season 8, hence why the song is sung in Episode 2, with the scene ending on Jon and Daenerys in the crypts of Winterfell. In this scene, the two characters discuss Rhaegar Targaryen, Jon's father, and Daenerys' older brother. Daenerys says she was always told that Rhaegar was a kind and decent man, yet the kidnap and rape of Lyanna Stark just makes no sense. Jon tells her the truth in this moment, that Rhaegar did not kidnap and rape Lyanna, but he loved her, and the two got married in secret, ultimately giving birth to a son, Jon Snow. The connection Jon and Daenerys have to Jenny's song is that many fans believe Rhaegar is the author of Jenny's song. Going back to the tragedy of Summerhall, the tragedy happened to fall on the day Rhaegar Targaryen was born, and Rhaegar was said to have had a strange obsession with visiting the ruins of the decimated castle. The theory is that Rhaegar was visiting the castle because he was meeting in secret with the Woods Witch, or the Ghost of Highheart. Rhaegar was also known to be obsessed with the prophecy of the prince who was promised. 
He would even write letters back and forth to his great uncle Aemon Targaryen, the Targaryen prince who served as maester of the Night's Watch for several decades. Aemon and Rhaegar came to believe that Rhaegar was the prince who was promised, but later in life Rhaegar started to believe that one of his sons would be this fabled hero. Jenny Song actually doesn't have an official name in the books. It's referred to as Jenny Song by the Ghost of Highheart, but the real name of the song has never been disclosed. We've actually covered this theory pretty extensively in the past, so you can check out this video here for a more detailed explanation. But, to make a long story short, it is theorized that Rhaegar, after learning the prophecy of the prince who was promised from the Woods Witch, hid the prophecy within this song, and he named it the Song of Ice and Fire. Rhaegar was also known as a skilled musician throughout the Seven Kingdoms. Daenerys learns this fact from Barriss and Selmy in Season 5, who tells Daenerys that Rhaegar would travel the streets of King's Landing playing his harp for the common folk. I was thinking about all the times your brother made me go with him down from the Red Keep into the streets of King's Landing. Why? We like to walk among the people. We like to sing to them. He sang to them? Yes. <laughs> Rhaegar would pick a spot on the hook or the Street of Seeds, and then he'd sing. Just like all the other minstrels. And what did you do? I made sure no one killed him. And I collected the money. Well, you'd like to see how much you could make. He was good? He was very good. One of the moments that led Lyanna Stark to fall in love with Rhaegar was Rhaegar's performance at the Tourney of Harrenhal. Not in the Joust, but in the Great Hall. Rhaegar is said to have sung a song so sad that Lyanna broke down in tears. One can assume that Rhaegar sang Jenny's song, accompanied with his harp. The first two lyrics of Jenny's song are in reference to the tragedy of Summerhall, and it makes sense why the Woods Witch reacts so strongly to hearing them sung. It tells of a woman who lost everything in one night, her loved ones, her husband, and the majesty of her new life. High in the halls of the kings who were gone. The halls being the Red Keep of King's Landing, the kings who were gone being all the previous Targaryen kings who ruled over the Seven Kingdoms. Jenny would dance with her ghosts, her ghosts being the loved ones that she lost during the tragedy of Summerhall, and also a clever reference to her friend, the Woods Witch, or the Ghost of Highheart. The story of Duncan Targaryen and Jenny of Old Stones also has parallels to Jon and Daenerys' current relationship. Since Jon is the last surviving son of Rhaegar Targaryen, he is officially the last male heir of House Targaryen. This gives him a stronger claim to the throne since he is both older than Daenerys and also a male. Daenerys has been put in a very awkward position. She may be forced to give up her claim to the Iron Throne, something that she has been fighting for her entire life in order to save her relationship with Jon. Like Duncan Targaryen before her, Daenerys may choose to abandon the throne in favor of love. Jon, on the other hand, has never been one to seek out power, but him learning about his true parentage may inspire him to claim his birthright. The lyrics in Jenny's song talk about Jenny's ghosts, the ones she had lost and the ones she had found, and the ones who loved her the most. These lyrics are literally describing John's situation at the end of the episode. He is in the crypts of Winterfell, honoring the memory of the ghosts he had lost, his father, his brother, his mother, honoring the ghosts of ones who had been gone for so very long that he can't remember their names, the ghosts of all the previous kings of Winter, people that he never knew, people that he might not remember. In Season 8, Episode 1, he found new ghosts in the crypts of Winterfell when Samwell tells him about his true parentage, with Lyanna being the ghost who loved him the most. Lyanna made her brother Ned promise her to protect Jon, knowing that if Robert Baratheon discovered his true identity, Jon would be killed. It's possible that Jon may want to honor the sacrifice and legacy of his mother by claiming his birthright, and this could be the fatal wedge driven between Jon and Daenerys. If it were true, it would make you the last male heir of House Targaryen. You'd have a claim to the Iron Throne. The additional lyrics of Jenny's song can be seen as metaphors for both future and past plot points of the show. The lines about kings who are gone, the ones she had lost, and the ones she had found can be seen as a metaphor for the crypts of Winterfell. A popular theory going around is that the Night King will resurrect all the previous kings of winter in the crypts. The added line of she never wanted to leave can be seen as a reference to Egret's death in season 4. Before she dies in Jon Snow's arms, she tells him that they never should have left that cave. Daenerys has a similar line in season 8 episode 1 telling Jon that they can stay in this secluded cave for 1000 years and no one would find them. 
The lyrics near the end of the song parallel some significant events from the series, from winter to summer, then winter again. The first winter could be seen as the first long night. The summer is the time in between these two apocalyptic events, and winter has finally come again. Till the walls did crumble and fall. Pretty self-explanatory. There is an emphasis put on the line, she never wanted to leave. This can be related to several different characters from the show. The obvious connection is Daenerys, since she is the main female protagonist. It signals a tragic end for the character, similar to Jenny from Oldstones, and even Lyanna Stark. Lyanna is also a character that lost her life in the midst of a complicated love. Lyanna and Rhaegar barely spent any time together, with their marriage lasting less than a year. Lyanna probably wished that she and Rhaegar could stay in the Tower of Joy together for a thousand years, never wanting to leave. This somber note of never wanting to leave may signal a similar fate of Jon and Daenerys' relationship to that of Duncan and Jenny and Rhaegar and Lyanna, a love between two people that ends in tragedy. Jon and Daenerys are also believed to be the two most likely candidates to be the prince who was promised, or princess. The showrunners may be aware of what Jenny's song implies, and that could be why they chose to include it in season 8. I'm more inclined to believe that Jon is the prince who was promised, being that the song's rumored name is the Song of Ice and Fire two sides of the same coin that John embodies through his heritage. But I also would not be surprised if the Prince Who Was Promised prophecy is something that was misinterpreted, something that we just don't understand. And this true meaning could be hidden in this cryptic song, that it's not about a specific individual, but it's about a series of events in which different people will have a role to play. Prophecies are dangerous things. I believe you have a role to play. As does another. The King in the North, Jon Snow. But what do you guys think? Were you excited to hear Jenny's song in this episode? Or are you surprised that Podrick can give the pipe and also has the pipes? And how do you think John and Daenerys' relationship is going to end in Season 8? Let me know in the comment section below and make sure to like, share, or don't. 